Okay, students. So today we are looking at the oxidation of benzhydryl. So this is pretty much the reverse reaction of what we did last time. And uh, what we have here is the benzhydryl molecule, where, which we synthesized in the previous reaction. Uh, we're going to use tetrabutyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate as our phase transfer catalyst. Uh, bleach is our actual oxidizing agent. Uh, ethyl acetate will be one of our solvents. We'll also have a little bit of water in there. And lastly, we should get as our product benzophenone, which is a ketone. All right, students, we're starting off this experiment by measuring out 0.37 grams of benzhydryl. This is a secondary alcohol, and this will be the main reactant for our experiment at the moment. Again, we are doing our best to measure out 0.37 grams of this reactant. Okay, students, students. so uh, next item that I am measuring out as a solid is our uh, phase transfer catalyst. So this is tetrabutyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate. And for this, we will be adding 40 milligrams or 0 0.04 grams of solid to our reaction mixture. All right, students, so uh, in my uh, 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, I have my benzhydryl and I have my 40 milligrams of the uh, tetrabutyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate uh, catalyst. I'm adding a stir bar so I can spin my solution once I create my solution. And our oxidizing agent is normal Clorox bleach. So I'm going to pour a little bit into a beaker so I can measure out five milliliters to add to my glass. Now for my solvent, I am adding ethyl acetate. And ethyl acetate is just your normal ethyl acetate that you have used before in the laboratory. Uh, this will also be five milliliters of liquid. Okay, now because we're going to stir this solution at extremely high speeds, I'm going to add a, a stopper to my Erlenmeyer flask, and this is all going to be done at room temperature, and I'm going to ask Lee to bring the uh, camera a little closer here so that you guys can see uh, that we are uh, having a little bit of reaction as the solid is dissolving, and uh, it looks like we're creating a little tiny bit of gas in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the stir. All right, students, it has been about 30 minutes since we let the reaction uh, start, and we're going to go ahead and test this by PLC. In your uh, uh, textbook, it says to uh, test it after about 15 minutes, but um, we let this kind of go double the length of time. So I'm going to take a few drops of sample here, and that was about three to four drops. I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on and allow it to continue stirring. And I'm going to add half a milliliter of uh, ethyl acetate solution to my TLC solution. And I'm also going to add half a milliliter of water. Uh, we will do a TLC and then uh, come and take a look. All right, so in my TLC sample here, I have uh, one layer of ethyl acetate and a layer of water. I'm letting the two layers separate. And my aqueous layer is down below on the bottom since it is the uh, heavier liquid of the two. I'm going to take a small sample from the top of the uh, solution here. So I'm just waiting for the two layers to separate fully. And I will take a small um, amount from the top layer so that I can create my TLC spot. Okay. I'm also going to co-spot with some of my TLC standard here, which has a mixture of both benzhydryl and benzophenone. Okay. Now that I have my two solutions spotted, we will place the TLC plate in the uh, chamber. And we'll come back in a moment and see how well our uh, spots have moved. Okay, so students, we have taken the uh, TLC plate out of the TLC chamber, and I'm going to go ahead and put it under UV light. Okay, so on the uh, left reaction lane here, we see that I have my um, uh, TLC standard. So down here we would see spots for benzhydryl and up above for benzophenone. In my reaction lane, there's still a decent spot here that shows me I have some benzhydryl still present, uh, but I am starting to create a spot of the benzophenone. So we're going to let this reaction go for a few more minutes and then we will test it again by TLC. All right, students, so uh, this is our second uh, TLC plate. So we let the reaction go for an extra 15 minutes. And I went ahead and spotted the uh, reaction mixture and the uh, TLC standard. And so we're going to take a look and see how well we did here. Right. Well, 
It looks like we still have a little bit of uh, Ben's hydro present in the solution, but uh, we are definitely increasing the spot uh, for, for the benzophenone here. So Ben's hydro is down here on the bottom and benzophenone is up at the top. And so we are getting more and more of the benzophenone to uh, present itself in the TLC mixture. Down below, we see that the Benz hydro spot is becoming fainter. So we will let this reaction go a few more minutes and test again. All right, so students, we have been uh, reacting the oxidation reaction for quite a bit of time. And I've been testing by TLC how well the reaction is progressing. I'm gonna have Lee bring up the camera so you can take a look at our uh, TLC cleats and uh, so from left to right we have uh, what's going on after an hour an hour and 15 minutes and 1.5 hours all the way on the right hand side so as you can see the uh, Benz hydro spot which is on the bottom right side it is slowly dissipating away and uh, being converted over to benzophenone uh, we will take a look at one more sample and hopefully see that all of our compound has oxidized. Okay students, so we have our last TLC here um, ready to go and this has been after uh, almost two hours of reacting. Uh, we added a little extra bleach to the solution but I'll have Lee get closer and show you the uh, spots that we see on the TLC. So on the right hand side we have the reaction mixture and we do see still a very faint Kind of a hollow spot of the benz hydro, uh, but we do have a much more significant dark spot of the benzophenone. So we're going to go ahead and work this up and we'll do one more TLC after uh, the workup and uh, you verify that all of our benz hydro has disappeared. All right students, so I have poured my reaction solution into a top test tube and I've let the two layers settle. I'm going to go ahead and use a long pipette to remove the lower aqueous layer here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start my transfer. And since we added extra bleach and ethyl acetate solution to our reaction mixture, I have quite a bit of aqueous layer to transfer here, but that's okay. Quitting, and I have one last little bit of aqueous layer to get rid of. Next, I am going to wash my organic layer with some saturated sodium chloride solution. And the recommendation is 3 milliliters, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and cap my... Uh, test tube here and invert a few times just to ensure that we're getting all of our aqueous layer to anything that is aqueous to move over to the aqueous layer. All right, so we're getting both layers to uh, separate here. It'll be just a moment before I can start removing that lower aqueous layer again. Okay, now the meniscus is very difficult to see here, so uh, so I'm going to go ahead and work quickly before I can't see it anymore. Okay, and even though the textbook says to uh, do a final wash with water, uh, we're going to go ahead and repeat a wash with sodium chloride because I believe this will be better at removing any phase transfer catalyst that could have been left behind or any traces of Ben's hydrol, uh, which would be a little more water soluble than our benzophenone product that we want. Okay. So after I remove this lower aqueous layer one more time, we will uh, add some magnesium sulfate to dry out our organic layer. Okay, so uh, I have now re uh, removed all of the lower aqueous layer and I'm going to go ahead and add some magnesium sulfate to help our dry our organic layer here. And I did have a, a little bubble of uh, aqueous layer at the bottom that I wasn't able to remove, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I add a good amount of magnesium sulfate in order to uh, isolate any aqueous compounds there that could have been left behind. And in a few moments, once this has dried out, we will filter uh, directly into a 25 milliliter round bottom flask and uh, then evaporate all of the liquid. Okay, so uh, we have added magnesium sulfate to our organic layer and we're now gonna go ahead and filter it. And we're just using a simple funnel with a piece of cotton and we are uh, measuring directly into a pre-teared uh, round bottom flask here. And so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, let the sample go. And wow, my magnesium sulfate is behaving it's like a solid little chunk of uh, salt here. And that's probably the best 
moment I've ever had with my consulting coming through <laughs> or not coming through when I'm trying to filter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and gently press down with my scapula here to release as much liquid as I possibly can into my round bone flask. And I will see you at the road of app in just a moment. Okay, students, we're going to go ahead and evaporate our solvent here. So I'm adding our uh, round bottom flask to, to the, uh, the road of app. And we're going to go ahead and uh, start the rotating and hopefully evaporate all the way all of this solvent. So our water bath is currently at 36 degrees Celsius, which is a little warmer than we normally have it, but we don't have dry ice in our cold finger today. So it's just a mixture of uh, ice and salt in order to help us uh, evaporate away the solvent. I'm gonna ask Lee to bring the camera forward so you can see we are already evaporating. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the rate of spin here so that we can evaporate the solvent and retrieve a nice solid. As soon as we retrieve that solid, we're going to weigh it, figure out how much we have, and then take the sample over to the infrared and see what we have. So students, we have uh, evaporated away our solvent, and because we had to turn up the temperature of the water bath in the road bath so high, uh, we actually isolated an oil. Uh, Lee handed me an ice bath and we placed it in the ice bath and as you can see here we have now some crystalline solid forming at the bottom of our round bottom flask. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dry this off and measure out how much mass we have isolated from our reaction. Okay students, so just to recap so far for our oxidation reaction, we started off with uh, 0.378 grams of benz hydrol. Uh, we use bleach as our oxidizing agent and uh, tetrabutyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate as our phase transfer catalyst. Our solvents were ethyl acetate and water, and we have created 0.313 grams of benzophenone. We're going to go ahead and take this over to the infrared and take a look at what peaks we can find. Okay, so here we are at the well, here we are at the infrared machine, and I have gone ahead and run a background on the machine. I just placed a small sample of uh, benzophenone on the reader here, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and see what we find in our infrared. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this over, and. Looks like we still have a small little alcohol peak that's showing up in our uh, reaction mixture here, but let me go ahead and correct our baseline and identify some peaks. And hopefully we will find a peak that is uh, about where we want it to be for our ketone. And oh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. And I'm going to go ahead and add a region and find our peak values right over here. So it looks like so far from uh, what I'm seeing on the infrared, we still have a little bit of benz hydrol that didn't get fully oxidized, but uh, we definitely see some peaks for our ketone right here at about 1716. This value here at about 1770, that is most likely a little bit of ethyl acetate that didn't fully evaporate. All right, students, so we're here at the melt point apparatus, and I just finished the melt point of benzophenone. We found a melt point range of 46 to 49 degrees Celsius, which is a little wider than we had anticipated, but that's okay. We saw that um, in the infrared, we saw a little bit of uh, benz hydrol spill in the reaction mixture. Uh, we are currently uh, melting the benz hydrol from our previous reduction experiment, and we're currently at 63 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're hoping to get a value of about close to 69 for this particular compound. I will let you know as soon as we get that value. All right, students, so uh, we did find the melt point of the benz hydrol molecule, and it turned out to experimentally be 68 to 69 degrees Celsius, and uh, that's right within the range that we were expecting for the reduction. Uh, just to repeat, the benzophenone experimentally melted at uh, 46 to 49 degrees Celsius, which is a slightly wider range than we anticipated, depleted, but at least we got it within the uh, literature value.